Hello, Time here. What do you think of my new hairstyle? I'll show how you too can style your hair like this. Composed of only seven locks of hair, it's super easy to model and it's a great place to start if you want to create more complex variations of this style. Let's get started. Yep, 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 First, let's delete the existing hair using the bunny in the gray hat to show only the cages in the hair group to make it easy to select only the hair patches using the rectangle selection tool. Select an appropriate point on the head to set the location for the first hair lock before selecting the hair lock from the character bar. Click this button to set an exact front view orientation. This exact orientation prevents the elliptical rings from twisting while we set up the bendy cylinder, making the process easier for the next stage. Click on empty space while holding down shift to deselect all points so we can drag a single point. Drag the top two points so that the lock begins curving around the head. Then click to add the rest of the points. If you accidentally add a point, press delete on your keyboard or control Z to undo the operation. You can untick the add point enabled field to disable the creation of new points. Except for the first two points, we want the control points roughly the same distance apart from each other. You don't need to have the exact same number of control points as me, but if you want to follow this tutorial closely, count to check you have 10 control points like I have. Each control point will become a ring of control points when converted to a patch. To convert to a patch, click the butterfly, then set the view to an exact side view so that we can drag the lock back and stretch it to cover the ear. Scale the last ring smaller to make the lock end with a more leaf-like shape. To duplicate this lock for the opposite side of the head, click this point and then click the daisy. Using the lever tool, rotate the lock around to the opposite side. Select the first three rings in both locks and then drag and rotate them appropriately so that the hair parts to the side of the head. With the first two locks added, let's now add the three locks for the back of the head. Begin by duplicating this lock again, like we did before, except rotate it to a right angle and drag it here. To assist with squashing the beginning points to form a wedge shape for this lock, toggle out of set buffer cage mode so that none of the points in this lock are hidden by the model's polygons. Then click the bunny in the brown hat so that we can only select the control points for this lock. With the wedge formed, let's now duplicate this lock two times so that we have the three back locks for our seven lock hairstyle. Select all the points for these two back locks and rotate them together so that where they meet each other aligns with the parting in the hair. Take care and don't rush the process. Avoid dragging points directly to their final positions if this will cause cramming or intermingling of points as this can lead to a loss of structure in your hair and make it harder to fix later. Even if you're going for a tousled look, Structure plays an important role in the appearance, especially when working with stylized hair composed of solid locks. It can help to hide locks near the one we're working on so that our view is not restricted. This can be especially useful when working on where the lock sprouts out of the head. Locks can be hidden from view by selecting them and then clicking the piggy while holding down the control key.
Let's now add the two front locks by duplicating the two mid locks and then dragging them forward. This gives us our total of seven locks. To make the beginnings of our two front locks curve around the head when viewed from the side, select the first three rings for both locks. Check to see if we've unintentionally selected any points elsewhere by toggling out of Z buffer cage mode, which can be done by pressing the space bar. Deselect points using the rectangle selection tool by holding down the control key as well as the shift key. With a side view and the pivot point dragged to an appropriate location, we can now rotate the selected points. Select all of this lock except for the first two rings and then rotate it forward a little so that it covers a small section of the face. Now let's style the first and mid locks on this side to go around the ear. Rotate the mid lock back and drag it a little and squash the last five rings. Squash these two rings behind the ear more. Drag the first lock's last five rings back and squash them to fit around the ear like so. After selecting a ring using the Select Ring tool, you have the option to twist the ring by ticking the Twist field. This feature allows you to twist the ring using the Lever tool without needing to change the orientation of the view. It's very useful for modeling hair. Most of the work from here on is a matter of refining the locks to give them a more hair-like appearance. Refining is where most of our time will be spent, but most of this work is non-taxing on our brains, so most of it can be enjoyed while listening to music or ASMR with headphones on. Treat it like it's a cosy game rather than a chore that needs to be done. Clicking the piggy for the selected lock helps to show how the rings are arranged where the lock begins. This lock doesn't need so many rings, so I'm deleting one to help form a smooth curve. To make it so that the hair doesn't look like it's only sprouting out of the top of the head, drag these points close to the head surface and insert another control line very close to these points. We only need to do this for the two front locks. We can't yet use the bunny in the grey hat to show all the locks cages because we haven't yet grouped the locks, but we can click this button which causes all the cages to be shown for all patches that share the same part node, which in this case is the hair part node. And so we can use this feature to make it easy to group all the locks. So now we can use the bunny in the grey hat. If we want to stretch both the forehead and the hair, click the bunny to show all the cages. 
Hide any patches we don't want to stretch, such as the eyebrows, eyelashes and eyeballs, using the grey hat. Then, with an exact front view orientation, select everything down to just above the eyes. Drag the pivot point down to the lowest selected point and then stretch up. To help hide unwanted gaps between the locks, align the rings in each lock with its neighbouring locks. This alignment is particularly important for the rings that control the locks sprouting out of the top of the head and those that cover the scalp. For the ends of the locks where they come apart, alignment isn't necessary. To shorten or lengthen all the locks, set an exact side, back or front view. Show all the locks using the bunny in the grey hat and then select the lower end of the locks using the rectangle selection tool. Drag the pivot point to the highest selected point before squashing or stretching. It's important to drag the pivot point before squashing or stretching as this will minimise distorting any of the control rings in the locks. Let's now modify the colour of our locks by adjusting their colour sweeps. First click the lock you want to copy from. Then use the rectangle selection tool to select the locks you want to paste to. Adjust the colour sweep for the click lock. Then click copy and then click paste. You can continue to adjust the colour without needing to click copy each time. Simply click paste to update the rest of the locks. To reduce the contrast between the skin and the hair colour with the hair parts, we can blend in some hair colour into the skin in this region. To do this, switch to paint mode, click the bone button and then click the skin. This will select the part node that contains all the polygons for our skin, which in this case is the pelvis. Alternatively, we can select the pelvis bone in the scene tree window. Before applying any paint with the brush, set the brush's opacity to 0.1 so that we can blend it into the skin nicely. If we now try animating our character, We'll see of course the control points for the hair need to be owned by the head bone. With only the cages for the hair showing, this is easy to fix. This seven lock hairstyle can be used on a wide range of styles. It even works for a character as realistic looking as Lucy.